Um, and he comes in and he talks to them. And, and you go on down the list. I, I, I think the corporate CEOs in this town are changing because they're hearing that need to change from some of this younger generation that's accomplishing it with um, the social networking. Um, it is one of the great strengths of this town that we are of a scale that we know each other and we ought to exploit that to our best uh, opportunity. I, I think it's really, really emerging as a great thing about this town. Well, thank you all for your comments. Today at the City Club of Cleveland, we are listening to a panel discussion featuring April Boys, Randall McShepard, Chris Ronan, and Beiju Shah. Now we would like to return to our speakers for our traditional City Club question and answer period. We welcome questions from anyone, including guests. Holding the microphone today is City Club PR and Program Manager, Carrie Miller. Now our first question, please. Surprise. I'd like you to comment on what distinguishes Cleveland from other American cities not too far away with a similar history and similar problems. What makes us different and what can we do to exploit the strengths that we have? I'll just start. It, it's, um, you know, what distinguishes Cleveland uh, is what Cleveland was founded for. Uh, which are distinguishing assets. Um, a city founded on two great waterways, um, still yet 200 and some years later, we haven't fully exploited that opportunity. Um, a city that was built out, again, of roughly a million people um, with some incredible assets like the Cleveland Orchestra and the Cleveland Museum of Art, but yet in a town today that's roughly half the size, um, still an opportunity to promote, again, best uh, mid-sized city in this nation. Um, I think we uh, have assets that stack up to anywhere in the country, our theater district. What, you, know, you can go on and on and on, and you know them. The, the issue is organizing around their continued success. Um, and the issue, again, I think is um, working uh, to develop a business model for Cleveland that works in the 21st century in a global model. And there needs a lot of fundamental change, whether it's government, whether it's business, whether it's tax structure. But it's not for lack of great assets that can catapult the city back to where uh, it once was in so many indicators. I would add that uh, our physical location uh, is a great advantage for us. Uh, depending on which report you read, we're 40 to 50 percent of the nation's uh, population is within, you know, 500 miles of the city of Cleveland. Not every city can tout that, and we should really take full advantage of that. I also think that uh, what really makes us special and unique, and I certainly share this with people when I travel, is the people. Um, the, the culture of giving that we have in this community. Um, it's not an accident that the Cleveland Foundation was the first community foundation in this country, that United Way was founded here. Um, I can go on and on. Our per capita giving was uh, at the top, has remained at the top of the charts over the years. There's something special about people that live here and, and the, the passion that they have for the, the place and, and maintaining the quality of the place. So I think um, we have to take advantage of that and we should be proud to tout that. Um, other parts of the country, people won't even say hello, uh, uh, let alone uh, <laughs> sit around a table and try to collaborate. So uh, we should take advantage of that. I guess I'll add uh, LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> many people say that we have many managers and not enough leaders in this community. The four of you, the very fact that you're sitting there brands you as being leaders. What are the elements that, that, that helped you to get to this position? Why don't you start off, April? Sure. Um, I guess the difference, I think you need to, to be both a manager and a leader. And I guess I see the difference as you know, a manager is somebody who kind of does and manages. But a leader is somebody that really has, has vision and whom people will follow, not just because they say that you need to. Um, and so I guess the thing that has helped me is um, just a variety of experience that I have had, both personal and professional, and working with other people who, um, who I aspire to be like, other leaders, um, whether it's, again, mentors that I've had in work or in personal, in personal situations. I don't, I, I mean, and it comes from within, too. I don't know. Well, I'll say, um, oh, I'm sorry? No, Randy. Um, I like saying this word VUCA because um, I uh, recently participated in uh, leadership training at the U.S. Army War College, which a lot of the RPM executives uh, have to do. And VUCA stands for Volatility, 
uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And the moral of the story is, as leaders, you have to be prepared to handle uh, whatever it is that you do, uh, those kinds of challenges. And I think um, knowing a little bit about the folks sitting on this panel, they've all faced that. And in light of that, they've remained diligent and uh, you know, did whatever they had to do to kind of push their respective organizations or issues or agendas forward. Um, so I think at the end of the day, it's just having the staying power uh, in this community, believing in uh, whatever it is that you're doing and not letting anyone turn you back, and um, learning from a lot of great people. Um, you know, uh, older generations, but also peers. You know, I, I get in inspired when I talk to uh, these three folks and, and others uh, in the room about uh, just what they're doing, and I see that they have as much of a passion for the city of Cleveland or the region as I do. So it's, it becomes, you know, uh, somewhat, uh, I don't know, contagious. Um, and um, I think uh, we have to continue to do whatever we can to help us to kind of hang together and support each other. Somebody uh, said to me the other day, I thought it was a fairly thoughtful comment, they said, policy is personnel. And uh, if you remember that in your organizations, um, you only get so many hires. So one of the things I try to do is hire people a lot smarter than me. Mort knows some of them. Uh, but uh, also, you know, I think that's a lesson for a lot of the, the businesses and governmental organizations around. But to kind of take that to another level, I think people uh, in this town need to take many inputs. In the end, there needs to be a few decision makers, especially on the civic end, that need to make decisions. But they're, they're, and we've seen this happen recently on some of our major transformative investments we want to make, is, is how do we get more public uh, input? Because there are smart people all throughout this community. I think that's a key. The other thing is Cleveland has the rap often of being the last community to do uh, what was sort of the last thing to do, uh, you know, which is to say we're, we're, bringing, we're the last in the caboose to bring up uh, the latest thing that's almost dated sometimes. I think the key to get ahead of that is to not be fearful of bringing in others from around the globe regularly here to talk about what's doing in other places. Um, we get back to education, which I'm glad we kind of opened with as the most important priority in this community. I don't think anybody disagrees, but we struggle with that in this community. If we look over to Chicago, we look a little bit with what Mayor Daly's administration is doing in Chicago. They've shaken the trees on education, uh, night school, weekend school, alternative schooling, supporting charter schools. Um, you name it, they're doing it because they're truly effectuating this issue of not leaving kids behind. And uh, I think we need to have the courage to ask people in this community not just a few people, but a lot of people, what needs to get done. And number two, we have to have the courage to say, you know what, some other cities have some pretty good ideas. Why aren't we doing it yet? So, you know, and do that earlier than later. Yeah, I'm not sure that I've got a lot to add. It's, it's, to me, it's just an attitude of just going out there and doing it. You know, there's, there's a lot of talking about uh, vision. There's a lot of sort of uh, elaborating what one's vision can be. But in the end, I think leaders just go out and do it. It's like Nike. I mean, it's I Nike. I about that all the time, but it's just do it. You have to, I mean, take action. Good afternoon. Uh, it's so unfortunate that we always reference LeBron James and we don't realize that the majority of the people that live in the city of Cleveland can't even afford to go see him play. Uh, and in light of that, what do you think will motivate a community that has experienced 0% growth in real income and average wage, wages between 1970 and 2007? And also, will reform initiatives supported by corporate interests generate a positive direction for the outcome of government reform uh, within this region? I, I'll address the first point. Um, I, I think, again, I think it goes back to education. I, I think the education part is so important. Rendell and I were just talking when we were eating lunch about a study that you saw in Europe, and I, I won't be able to quote the statistics, but when you look at um, changing someone's education and you know, getting them a high school diploma or the equivalent, or the equivalent and then a two-year degree and then a four-year degree. And if you look at the change, um, the average change in earning power of having an education, having a high school education, again, going further and further, the numbers are astronomical. So I think we have to focus on education. We have to, edu we have to get people educated. I think that's huge. I don't, I don't think, Eric, this community can let out-migration continue beyond our regional borders anymore. I think the state has been absolutely asleep for decades, Democrats and Republicans, about looking at the flat growth population of the state of Ohio and not doing anything to shore up existing communities. Um, th those days are numbered. We're not growing. We are growing outward, ever outward. And the biggest victims in that centrifuge have been the center city uh, workers that you're talking about. Firms have just hopscotched down the highways. I don't blame them. I blame a state that's incentivized them with tax uh, inducements ever outward. 